What day are we up to? Is it day 13? I think it's day 13 and we're doing product photography. Right, after yesterday's absolute total emotional roller coaster trying to get what ended up being an awesome shot, today's was a lot easier and I thought I'd share a lot more information about how I got the final image. First of all, for product photography, in a real budget sense, I think there's a couple of things you're going to need. One, either a black cloth or a white cloth. I actually have two. One, blacking out the window behind me, and another one so I can drape over tables or use as a portable backdrop. I kind of actually both use them like that. But simple, black, as thick as you possibly can, as cheap as you kind of can, cloth. This one, to be honest, I, ha I don't know if I've ever cleaned it fully. I give it a, a scrub every once in a while with a lint remover and a clean with a cloth and an iron every once in a while if I have to for certain areas but just simple black cloth is fantastic. Next part that I think is more essential than anything else is a light. You can't see the main one I use right now because I'm using it to light me but a good either a strobe as in one that flashes or a constant light which is a bit more better for video but either or will do the job plus a softbox. Now the softbox I use is absolutely huge and the bigger you go the bigger subjects you can light but for most people Something like this here will be absolutely fine. This isn't too big, and for most product, that'll be enough to soften that light and give you that more professional lighting look. And I can't stress enough that light in a good softbox is more important than nearly anything else. You do need a camera as well, obviously. Next up, you want to better control the light in your room as much as possible. So I've completely blacked out the north facing window behind me because that's where the most direct sunlight comes through, and I don't want that changing the light on my subject in the room too much. I've also got windows over to that side there which I've closed the curtains on just as much as possible just to block out that light. And then I've got another window behind you that I have open because that south facing light doesn't change too much. And last of all, you need to pick a product to shoot. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a product of you for your own business you want to shoot, you will hopefully get some tips from this. If you've been paid to shoot a product, cool. Or if you're just doing it for the challenge, I picked Dark Heart Beard Oil. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have a beard and I love this stuff. I think it's from a, I'm very sure it's from a Kiwi product. Handcrafted in New Zealand. What is phenomenal about this product it is, is that it is coffee and leather flavored. It smells incredible and that was my product to pick today. By the way, this video isn't sponsored by them. I just love their stuff. So to start things off with the most simple shot, table, black cough, light on top, get to about eye level of your product and take a simple shot of it. I then twisted my product around, just rotated it on the spot until the light really hit the, the face of my bottle nicely. So that there is the logo, the money maker of this product. And I didn't want it in shadow, I didn't want it with glare on it, just rotated so it had the most light, light possible without being in shadow and without being glary. That was simple as. Then, <laughs> to get a little bit creative, I didn't have a second light on me, so I used my cell phone torch. Just like that there, just as a second source of light, just to hit the edge and hit that little rim and make the subject look a little more 3D. Everyone's got a cell phone or know someone with a cell phone that torches that easy second light. I wouldn't use it as your main one because it's quite harsh and unflattering, but just to hit that rim and add that bit more shape to your object, any light source will do the job pretty fine. And the first shot was basic and fine. It, it suits the subject because it's very dark and it's called Dark Heart in the title. So all that simplicity of it really works. And it's starting to rain. You might hear that rain coming in. Why didn't it rain yesterday for yesterday's photo instead of being sunny? Ugh. But in the end, the first photo's pretty good. It's, it's, it's simple. It's clear. The light's nice. Looking at it a bit closer later on, actually. It's not quite as sharp as it should be. I did miss that. But easy to reproduce. And... It does the job, but that doesn't make for an exciting video, and it was just okay to shoot. So part of the TV photo challenge, we're going to take it to another level. So an easy way to get creative with your product is to find out what it stands for. What is it about? What is its ingredient? So in my case, I was pretty lucky because the ingredients were on the name of it, coffee and leather. So I got some coffee beans, I got some leather, and I had a play. Try and have just some different arrangements using like say a belt or just some scrap bits of leather or just the objects that you've got and just having a play literally being creative and not feeling in that that rush or pressure to get an end result just finding something that looks good and having time makes this a lot easier 
For me though, shooting that straight on with those ingredients, it just wasn't quite working, so I decided to change to a, a top-down, straight-on kind of look. And after shifting all that coffee around and really trying to sharpen up those edges, and I just used a, um, a book, a, st a straight surface, a straight line in the end, just to sharpen up the shape, I think I got a final product that I was pretty happy with. I mean, it's, it's not too bad, but I feel its biggest flaw is actually, it distracts a little bit from the subject, just because those lines lead to it, which helps, but also lead away from it. It just wasn't quite perfect for my taste. And while it's pretty good, I reckon I could do better. So this end shot I got, I feel far more helps frame the subject and still gives that little bit of a story about the ingredients that are inside that bottle and add that little bit more of a depth to the photo as well. As far as the editing goes, it might look a little bit complex, but it's mostly just trying to enhance the light and add that depth and that 3D to what is a 2D subject. A photo is not 3D, so trying to add as much depth as possible I think is quite key. Also, I spent ages doing spot removal. I've had this bottle here for, I don't know, ages, and it's getting a little bit beat up. And I mean, it looks pretty fine here. But when you look really closely at the photo, there is a lot of little specks and marks and scratches and because I've got such nice light on it, it really enhances all those little flaws in it. So spot removal was a big part. Also while shooting it, I got that cell phone in really close and took another shot just with the cell phone lighting up one edge of the, of the bottle. I wasn't too worried about the cell phone being in the shot, I was more worried about the light on the bottle. I then took all those images into Photoshop, I did some even more spot removal and just tried to tidy up the blacks and the flat surface of it, plus using a real simple mask, I masked in that light edge from the cell phone just onto the shot. And as you can see from the before and after here, adding that little bit of a that line just adds that 3D, that depth, that shape, that little bit more professional look to the photo compared to without. As always guys, thank you very much for following along. If you have any questions about anything I've done, please feel free to ask down in the comments below. If you would like to join in on this challenge or any other challenge that's been inspired by this, feel free to hashtag TB Photo Challenge. I've been loving seeing all your work. If you can like, share, and subscribe to this video or get one of your friends to subscribe, it would mean the world to me and it gets me one step closer to doing this more and more for a full-time living. I have really appreciated all the support you've done so far. And where's my challenges? And if you would like to join in or follow along tomorrow, we are going to be trying to take some photos, can't unfold the paper, of abstract.